Okay. Hey, collectors, here we are again. Uh, we're working on our unboxing number 64 today. And uh, today is the 15th of February. Time is marching on. Spring's around the corner, I hope. So, I know a lot of you guys, um, you write in and you say, Oh, Whitman, why don't you tell some of those old stories about finding things? And uh, I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll tell one of those old stories today that I, I hope you'll like. Um, many years ago, uh, I used to work uh, at nights and on the weekends. Uh, my family was in the heating and air conditioning business and I used to sell heaters and air conditioners on the side. And uh, one day we had a, uh, a lead from uh, a man in uh, my own hometown, Moorestown. Uh, and in fact, um, uh, he lived only a, a block or so away from where my house is now. I didn't live there then because this was back in the... Uh, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s, uh, but I went over to see him about, uh, uh, he wanted to get a, a new heater, uh, I think he wanted to convert from oil to gas or something like that, that was that was done a lot in, in those days, and, and let me just get a little fortitude here, first of the day, you know guys, it's early like I always say, but what the heck. Mmm, yeah, that's a, that's a good start. So, I went down to, uh, to see this guy, and uh, he's a nice um, older fella, and he says, well, come on down the cellar, and I'll show you what we got down there. So I get down the cellar with him, and uh, uh, he had an old heater there that uh, obviously uh, needed replacing and uh, gas was the way to go those days and get rid of those old oil burners. Every once in a while those oil burners would cough and fill your whole house up with soot and things like that so they weren't weren't the greatest things. So, mm. so we're walking around the cellar and I'm I'm looking at his uh, duct work and so forth to see whether everything will match up with a new heater and uh, and I was under the uh, what you call the return air duct. The return air duct is the duct that brings the uh, conditioned air from the house back into the heater and then when it's reheated it goes through another duct, the, the hot air duct. So I'm looking at the return air duct and, uh, and I look up and Damn, I couldn't believe it, guys. I, I knew, I, I recognized it immediately. There was just the tip of an army dagger pommel that was sticking out over the top of that ductwork. And uh, I said to the man, I think his man was Mr. Name was Mr. Nichols, if I remember correctly. And I said, Mr. Nichols, uh, is is that a German dagger you have up there? And he says, "Oh yeah." He says, "There's seven or eight of them up there. I brought them back from the war." And I said, "Wow. Um, do you have a little stool where I could get on?" And so he brought a stool over, and I got up. Uh, and true to form, uh, there was a couple of armies, a couple of SAs, a uh, an RAD EM hewer, and an RAD officer. Uh, a naval dagger, if I remember correctly, and then right in the middle of the whole group was a, I, this is all true guys, there was a chained SS and it was, it was really a beauty. Uh, in those days I didn't know the difference between a Type 1 or a Type 2 or a, uh, I forget whether it was painted or anodized, I think it was a painted scabbard, but it was really in uh, nice condition. In fact, all the daggers were in nice condition, and it was a good thing that they were on the top of the return air duct and not on the top of the heating duct. Otherwise, years of a, of a hot duct work probably would have ruined the daggers, but they, they were all in, um, still in good condition, and I looked at the blades, and, uh, and uh, he says, oh, what do you like those things? I says, yeah, I, uh, I collect them. Uh, 
He says, well, they've been sitting here for years, and uh, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with them. He says, so I looked at them, and uh, I scratched my head, and uh, I said, what would you think if you could get a free heater for these daggers? And he says, man, you're talking to me. That sounds great to me. And I said, well, I think we can do that. So um, we put in a, a new heater, and... Uh, uh, and I got all of those daggers, and uh, uh, it was about a week after that, I was at the, uh, the old show in Cincinnati, and uh, when we'd get there, we always would uh, sit in the lobby of the hotel and wait for guys to come in that we knew might have daggers, and then go to their room and try to scoop those before the show started, and... Uh, in this case, my old buddy Ron Winan walked in, and I think most of you people know the name Ron Winan. Uh, Ron's a good friend. I've known him, oh, God, uh, over 40 years. And um, uh, I was telling him about the, uh, the adventure uh, I had with, uh, with these daggers, putting in a new heater, and... Uh, and I told him about the chained SS, and, and Ron said, uh, wow, can, can, do you have the dagger with you? And I did, and, uh, and I showed it to him, and, uh, and he loved the dagger. And uh, Ron, at that time, uh, was doing what were called motel buys. For you guys that don't know what they were, these uh, dealers would run ads in a local paper that they'd be set up at a... Uh, such and such motel on Saturday morning or whatever, and uh, uh, people would uh, would come, line up, and uh, and bring their um, their souvenirs, which was um, uh, a pretty good business in those days because there was a lot of veteran stuff still around. So Ron had actually compiled almost a well today I know he has a complete collection, uh, and every piece in his collection, he even has a, a chained SA high leader, uh, all had paperwork from the veteran that he got it from because he bought all of his stuff at motel buys. He wouldn't buy anything for his collection unless he could trace it back. So he said to me, well, do you have the, uh, the name and the information where the dagger came from? And I said, yeah, Ron, I can get that. So I, uh, I went over to see Mr. Nichols when I got home and got him to write a little paper up that uh, he indeed, indeed did bring the stagger back and so forth and sign it. So that is how Ron Winan got his chained SS stagger. And uh, to my knowledge, he probably still has it. Uh, I've never seen Ron's collection because he keeps it all in safe deposit boxes, but uh, I know he's got uh, he's got everything. So that's just a story of what can happen to you uh, when you're least expecting it. At least in the old days, like that, it did. So uh, I hope you like that. And uh, what I'll do now is we we have some boxes to open to open up and. Uh, I also, Robbie and I, went to a show in Allentown last weekend, and we bought a few things, and, uh, and I'll show you them. In fact, I'll show you those things from Allentown first. Okay, uh, collectors, uh, these are the things we got at Allentown. We didn't get an awful lot. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Robbie and I, were we, we had to spend about an hour uh, getting some uh, metals vetted. And which was important to us, so we didn't have as much time as we usually do to run around, but mm, but we still got a couple of things, and uh, uh, we got this um, beautiful um, police municipal NCO Shaco, and um, as you can see, it's all complete with the cockade and the aluminum eagle and a nice um, chin strap and and a good. Um, um, uh, brim. Uh, the top shows just a little bit of age crazing in the leather, but it's not bad. Uh, and what's unusual and nice is that uh, the entire uh, felt throughout the whole cap is perfect. There's no mothing on it at all. And uh, inside, it's just really a killer. Um, 
the head the headliner is still perfect with uh, the uh, the cord in it. Uh, it also has the the um, people that sold it, Robert uh, Lubstein. Uh, and if you look real close, you can see that the cap was made by Errol. So that's about that's about the best you can get. Uh, and then there's a stamp in there for size 58. But, so I, this this is in uh, near mint condition. It's a very very nice um, kepi. So I was um, I was happy to get that or shako or shako. I keep calling them a kepi. It's a shako. Sorry about that, guys. And then I got a youth knife. Um, the scabbard paint shows a little usage, uh, but the um, the plating is still very good on it. Um, the grip plates and the insignia are still perfect, and it really has a, a terrific blade. It has just a little bit of sharpening, but you can see that all of the um, grain is still in the blade, and that's that's very rare to see on these youth knives. And the same on the other side, it's um, it's really in great condition, uh, and it's an RZM 713, which was um, Schüttelhofer, I believe. Uh, it's got the washer and so forth. So I think that's a uh, I think that's a very nice um, youth knife. You don't see them that nice. So that's a good one. And next. Uh, you think, oh, it's just a police bayonet. Well, you're right, it's a police bayonet, um, but it's got really nice um, nickel fittings and good insignia, a nice um, black frog, and the scabbard leather is still very good on it. Uh, but what's interesting to me, and it will be to guys that collect police bayonets, the blade is stone mint, beautiful nickel plated finish uh, but when you look at it you'll notice that the fuller stops here and it has a regular tip on it so this was a piece that was made during the Nazi period not one of the cut downs that 95 percent of them are this blade was made then and on the reverse it has a nice um, a nice Alcozo trademark uh, from about um, uh, 37 through 39 uh, and also there are no numbers on this piece and the reason for that is that numbering system went back to the Weimar time the Nazis didn't use those numbers that are on police bayonets so there was no point in putting numbers on the pieces made uh, during the Third Reich time so uh, this is a very very good bayonet for those of you that um, that collect these and very difficult to find and the condition is superb throughout so I like that and then uh, lastly uh, I was fortunate enough to find this um, government official dagger uh, it's an Alcozo textbook example absolute textbook it's got a fine uh, pommel on it and and nice um, uh, cross guard with the the wreath and swaths, um, very fine grip plates. And what I like too, when I looked at the uh, spanner nut on the top, uh, the nut does not look like it's ever been uh, taken out. So that's kind of unusual to find on a on a geo. And then the scabbard is um, is in absolute perfect condition. Good uh, uh, oak leaf fans, and it has the uh, Alcozo type um, eyelet with the little um, sleeve there where the rings go in, which you like to see. And then the blade just couldn't be nicer. It's a uh, it's a mint blade. Uh, I'm very happy with it. And um, on the reverse of the blade, it has the. Um, uh, Alcozo trademark um, this one would put it it's the script over the um, ACS scale so that that trademark would be uh, 1940 so that's when the uh, the geo dagger was produced so that's uh, 
I think that's a nice, uh, a nice government official, and uh, it's really clean, and as I say, totally textbook. And then yesterday, I didn't buy this at the show, but yesterday some guy was banging on the door and uh, asked if I wanted to buy this. Um, uh, it's a DAF um, insignia. It's all aluminum and so forth with the cog wheels going around it. Uh, these are unmarked, uh, but it's a um, it's kind of a kind of a nice piece and. Uh, uh, something that would be decorative for somebody's collection. So that's all we got at Allentown, but um, I think it's enough, and uh, uh, now I'm going to start uh, unboxing. Yeah, uh, Robbie just reminded me there was one other thing that we got at, at Allentown. I've forgotten. I'll show it to you. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a pretty rare sport shirt. Uh, we've never seen one before. You'll notice the collar is a different color and it has long sleeves and the cuffs are a different color and then it has the uh, National Sports Eagle on it. Uh, then it's got a little tag here with a with a number on it that we usually see on on shirts and um, uh, we, we feel that this shirt was used for soccer uh, and it's really kind of a rare, in fact, it's a very rare shirt, and it's in perfect condition throughout. The little spot there, but that's about it. And uh, and what also is interesting, it it's on the uh, it's on the original hanger that that the guy brought back with it. It's got the uh, uh, information of one of the tailors or whatever, Carl Mueller from Donsick. So that's kind of cool to have the uh, the original hanger. And we know it's a period hanger too because there's no Donsick anymore. That's part of the Poland that, uh, what do they call it now, Hob? Do you remember? It's the, the capital of uh, Poland, I think. Not the capital. <laughs> Um, it's still down From where Lekwalens is from. What's that town? Lekwalens. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Well, I'm sure somebody will write us. We'll get ten guys that will write it. Don't you know the name of that town? You... I thought it was still Danzig. No, not, no, they don't call it Danzig anymore. <laughs> no. Well, we'll have I to guess get this back whole to you. brain's not working as good. We'll get back to you on that one. Mm. Okay, so that's that. That's kind of a cool shirt though, isn't it guys? Now we'll start with the, the unboxing and see what we got here. This is kind of a small envelope. We'll, we'll get rid of that first and go from there. See if we can get this open without too much problem. That's your cutter for today? Things not even opening up paper. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bad cutter. I better get another one. Let's see, what we, oh, there's not much in here, just this little little bit of bubble wrap with something in it. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Oh, this is something we can always use. Yeah, look at there, guys. Wow. There's a couple of uh, really nice um, uh, iron crosses, second class. Look at the length of the ribbon on this one, wow. Boy, that is really, really long. Yeah, you can get a couple out of that one. Yeah, that's a, that's a really a nice ribbon. Oh, I think I see a, uh, yeah, the, the uh, loop is stamped also with a, with a number there, it looks like. I don't know whether Ob can get that, but it's pretty small. But uh, but that's a. Can you get that, Ob? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. It could be upside down. I can't tell. All right. Uh, we'll just say L20. <laughs> yeah, and and then this other one has a nice ribbon also. Both these crosses have the full full finish on them too. See that, guys? Yeah. And they're really really nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, this one's this one's got a. Uh, Got a maker number on it too on the loop there. 
so uh, so those are uh, those are really nice um, uh, you don't see the um, the maker number on all of them it's maybe about 50 percent I think the the crosses that were made later on maybe they uh, they dispensed with num putting the maker number on but it's it's really nice when you when you see it so that's uh, that's good we're glad to have them let's see what else we got here this is an envelope that's kind of heavy looks like it's coming from uh, Australia. Well, I hope not much of a packing job for something coming from Australia, but let's see if this will, yeah, and this even comes up easily. How about that, guys? I hope the item is still in here. Wow, look at this. They didn't even they didn't even wrap it. Oh yeah, they did. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, there is some wrapping around it, but not much. Can see a padded envelope and <laughs> and a trash bag. Wow, that's, uh, that's not much of wrapping for such a long trip. Oh boy, look at this. Wow, I hope it's okay. Wow, wow. Oh boy. Wow, I like <laughs> I like that eagle. Wow, you like that, Ob? Yeah. Boy, that's super, isn't it? What do you think, early SA pull top? I don't know. It's a, it's a pull top, but it's huge. Yeah. And uh, it's nice on the other side, too. Look at that. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really, really uh, super. I don't know whether it's marked anywhere. I don't see any markings on it, but... It's the first one like this I've ever seen. It's really, what a great wall decoration, you know. It's almost as good as a railway eagle. Wow, can you imagine that? Sending it wrapped in a trash bag and a padded envelope from Australia. And it made it. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great. That's very good. I like that a lot. You guys like that, I'm sure. If somebody's seen one like that, I'd like to hear what it is because I don't know what that comes from but it sure is a nice eagle isn't it yes sir we'll take it well, let's see what the, see what else we got here uh, let's see try this box here ah, that's pretty much fun I wasn't expecting that wow who thinks you're going to get a choice eagle like that? Yeah, this cutter seems to work all right. I'll, we'll see. All right. Yeah, how about that eagle? Wow. wonder what that is. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it is, does have a distinct shape, so it probably represents some organization. Mmm, that has a distinct taste too. Just perfect. Is it 12? Oh, it's 10 after 12, I think. Yeah, it's 10 after 12, so uh, drinking's okay now. <laughs> Maybe the first sip was a little early, but uh, let's see what this is now. Well, we got a copy of the New York Post here. Oh, it looks like we got a helmet, guys. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is really a uh, this is a very very good piece, guys. The liner is still perfect. The chin strap is in there, and uh, this is a um, this is an Africa Corps piece. It. Um, uh, this man that sent it to me, he's a um, retired uh, uh, New York detective, and um, and his father, his father brought this home. Uh, I've been trying to 
trying to get this helmet for a lot of years, but he never wanted to sell it. But now he he finally uh, he finally sold it, or is going to sell it. Uh, there's a little swaz on the top. I don't know what that's doing there, but uh, this camo paint is certainly uh, exactly correct for Africa Corps, and the liner and so forth really looks looks good too. Let's see whether this. Yeah, that, uh, <coughs> that'll fit right around the, the brim, so uh, uh, that's, a, that's a hell of a nice uh, helmet, and there's a, a little letter here, that, uh, there's more on the front, there's, what's that? There's more on the front, more on the front of what? The helmet. What more? Oh yeah. Tunis. Hmm. That's where I guess he. Uh, yeah, and there's something else here, written underneath of it, 1943. I guess the vet must have done that. Um, boy, what a cool helmet. Um, let's see, I got a time. Here he says. Uh, Enclosed you'll find a World War II North African German helmet. My father sent this to me from there when I was a kid. Many years ago, you purchased the Damascus Dagger Naval from me, and I showed you the helmet. Yep, he, I did, and he did show me the helmet many years ago. I would like to sell it now as when I, something the kids will, th oh. Uh, when I go, the kids will throw it away. Whatever you think is fair. There we go. So that's a uh, absolute uh, original uh, helmet there. Uh, I kind of like the vet treatment to it too. That uh, adds to the uh, to the thing. And yeah, it's got a name on the inside too. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that helmet from many years ago when he showed it to me. And uh, uh, see if you live long enough, this stuff does come to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes longer, but that is a. Uh, I think that's a great helmet. I don't know what all this stuff is on the on the front here, but. Uh, there's a lot of personalization on there and yeah. things. Well, that's okay though. Cool. That's cool. You like that one, Oh Man, I do. Nobody can say that one's not original, guys. Hmm. You never know with these guys. <laughs> yeah. oh, they, they, nothing's original with some guys. More never happened. Yeah, so how about that, huh, guys? Boy, I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Yes, sir. When do you see a nice Africa core helmet like that? I'll tell you. That is that is okay. Uh, let's see what we got. Got here. Kind of a big box. This is uh oh this is from my friend um, Serge Mache. You guys some of you guys may know Serge. He's he lives in California, and he's a good buddy of mine, and uh, I think he's one of the monitors on the Wehrmacht Awards Forum, and that kind of stuff, but we'll forgive him for that, I guess. But uh, uh, Serge is a very fine man, and uh, he just recently had uh, not a single, not a double, not a triple, but a quadruple bypass can you imagine that and uh, and he's recovering from that now and uh, I hope that he uh, hope that he's getting along okay it looks like he put some uh, popcorn in here Rob so we'll have to dump some of that out see what we can find here I think we've got most of it out of there hopefully we won't get it all over the place I wonder what surge could be. Uh, maybe selling something, I guess, to maybe help with his, his medical stuff. 
stuff for, I don't know, but we shall see, guys. Whatever it is, it'll be welcome from Serge. He's a, he's a very, very nice man. Does a lot for the hobby. What do we got here? Oh my. Wow, what is this? Uh, Zum 30 Yara Dienst Jubilee D. Vet. Off of their 14th division, 61036. It's a, um, a plaque that must have been awarded for um, uh, horsemanship. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Look at this. It's really, really beautiful. Can you get that dedication, Ob? Boy, I like that a lot. You like that, Ob? Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's a that's a nice plaque. Uh, the way it all is, you know, uh, comes out off of the wood and all. And wow, that's neat, Serge. Okay, buddy. Check will be in the mail. <laughs> I like that. We don't see a lot of. Um, horsemanship awards and uh, of course the Germans uh, were great uh, horsemen and uh, you guys know they participated in the Olympics with equestrian events and all so uh, so that's a uh, that's a good thing very good thing thank you Serge and uh, I hope that uh, I hope that all goes well with your healing up I know on that operation they split your chest open and oh god I can't even imagine what that must be like to recover from that. Well a drink to you, to your health, Serge. Mmm. Well that's to my health, I'll tell you that. Woo, man. Well let's see what we got here next. Moving right along guys. Well, so far it's been some uh, some pretty interesting stuff, I think, anyhow. You know, you never know what's going to be in these boxes. It, uh, uh, it's always fun to, to see what pops out underneath all the popcorn or whatever. And a trash bag from Australia with a... Uh, Beautiful eagle in it. I, I don't understand that, but well, let's see. This is kind of a difficult thing to figure out here. Maybe this will do it. <coughs> oh, yeah, I think I broke the code. Up, oh, a box within a box with padding and all. Oh, that's that's the way you want to ship stuff that's that's breakable or denable or something like that. That's a good idea to do it that way. Let's see what we have here. Whatever it is, uh, uh, the person that's sending this wanted to make sure that nothing happens to it, so that's, that's good. Well, I know, I know there's suspense going on here, but Whitman with his needs. Mm. Yeah, that's better. This cigar was all chewed up. Mm -hmm. Well, you ready, guys? Let's see what we got here. I think I recognize the shape of that. Do you guys recognize that shape? What do you think this could be, Ob? Looks like a sock. <laughs> a sock. <laughs> wow. 
Oh my goodness, what a lovely thing. Oh my God, look at the patina. The patina is outrageous. Mm. It's, see the peening in the surfaces and the, the beautiful raised out iron cross. And then on the reverse, the two fighting Luftwaffe Eagles. Um, you guys already know, uh, this is a Luftwaffe Honor gab Goblet and uh, what a honey it is. Uh, I don't think this has ever been cleaned. It's just like the day it was presented. And let's see if it's, uh, yeah, it's got a presentation. Um, Oberleutnant, oh, it's to a, an officer. Oberleutnant August Wolf, W-O-L-F-F, -F, um, 10.2.43. So there we have a, the recipient's name, Oberleutnant August Wolf, and it was awarded in 1943. And uh, there's plenty of information right there where we could um, research this man, especially the fact that he was an officer would make it a little bit easier. But I just can't believe the uh, patina is just so fantastic. Oh, just beautiful. Um, okay, it's a, um, ah, it's a, it's an alpaca, no, or it is, no, it says fine silver, um, uh, Johann Wagner and son, uh, Elisa, A-L-E-S-S-A, -S -S it looks like, that may be, uh, the word for alpaca, but, uh, just the, um, yeah, the alpaca is there. Is it there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that is, the patina is just extraordinary. That is, that is really, really a beautiful thing. Man, that's one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful goblet I've ever seen. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. You like that piece, Ob? Oh, how can you not like that? Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, I think alpaca is the only one who made them. Alpaca is the material. That's yeah. the. It's not silver. Oh. Alpaca was a. Um, uh, alpaca is what German silver is, and German silver had no silver in it. <laughs> it was originally invented by the Chinese, but the Germans used it a lot too on their things. Okay. But. Um, Wow, what a what a tremendous uh, honor goblet! I I really really uh, I really like that a lot. Um, well, this is something that uh, uh, next week is the uh, great SOS show, guys, in Louisville. So we'll take this there, and I'm sure it'll look um, wonderful on our uh, our display tables. Well, okay, collectors, uh, I went up to get another drink. There must have been a hole in this glass, as they say. Yeah, that one's okay. Well, let's see what we got next. This box is kind of heavy. This open looks like one of those registered mail jobs here with all the, the tape and the stamps from the post office and all that stuff. Uh, let's see if we can get this open without too much problem. My trusty Bob Burns cutter here. time it looks like we got a copy of the beacon oh we're getting a lot of unread newspapers here uh, let's see what's in here a little free bubble wrap and oh we're starting right up here there's a 
I'll just take the things out as they're here, I guess. Let's see what we got. This feels like a, a holster. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a nice holster, too. Uh, it's for a P38. It's in good condition all the way around. Yep, looks good. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, Waffenamt there. And uh, also has the um, P38 stamp there. So that's a that's kind of a nice thing. Get that up. Yep. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. I don't deal in guns, guys, but uh, but the holsters are okay. Uh, the laws in my state are a little rough for. For um, firearms, so I figure that I'm better off staying out of jail and uh, uh, stick with just holsters. Oh, here's another um, another P38 or no P08? No, I think this is a Luger. I think this is a Luger holster. Uh, it's marked P08. That would be Luger, would it not? You don't know, I'll, I don't know, but we'll save it. And it's Waffen Amped also. It's in nice condition, very nice condition. We'll see how the front looks here. And it's got a strap here. We'll see if that comes up. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the little slot for the. Um, what was it, the takedown tool or something that went in there? I'm not sure, but you gun guys would know. But I think this is a Luger holster, though. Okay, so that's that's a good thing. Let's see what else is here, guys. Well, this looks like a, a dagger, guys. Let's see what we got here. Looks like a look rocker from here. Yeah. I'll have to do a little more surgery here. There we go. Oh my, uh, I see it has one fault, it's in the scabbard backwards too, um, it has a, um, has a missing um, scabbard band, uh, but um, you know maybe we can find a band for that, but uh, got a nice uh, yellow uh, grip and um, uh, gilded um, swazes on the pommel. Looks like it might be a Wiresburg or something. I don't know. We'll see here. That's an SMF. Yeah. Beautiful SMF blade. Uh, these were always nickel plated. Like this one is. And uh, yeah, there's the SMF trademark and the Waffen Amp on the mint blade. Well, we're going to have to find a, um, a scabbard band for it if that's possible. Uh, but still, it's um, it's a nice, uh, really nice, uh, nice dagger. Uh, everybody loves SMFs, and uh, they're one of the few daggers that very often the gilding is still there uh, on the pommels. So, uh, so that's a that's a nice thing. Uh, I wish the uh, I wish the band were there, but uh, uh, we just have to have to take things as they come, you know. Not much we can do about uh, what happens over all these years. Now let's see what we got here. Oh. This looks pretty good, guys. Let's see here. Uh, looks like a couple things in this trash bag. I 
I'll do a little surgery. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Well, this is cool. Look at this, guys. A, uh, a belt. Uh, oh my, it's more than a belt. It's got a, uh, a beautiful um, SS buckle on it, uh, and a K98 bayonet, and a uh, really mint condition uh, set of um, cartridge uh, pouches. Really, really nice. Um, I don't know if they're marked or not, and let's just see, uh, see if the bayonet is, oh yeah, the bayonet is nice. It's number 7466, and let's see what's here. I think we're on a roll, Wob. Isn't that 7466? Uh, it sure does look like it. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think you're okay with that one. And dollars to donuts, that pouch is marked SS too. Sometimes they are. Uh, boy, that's a nice bayonet too. The blade yeah. is perfect. The bluing is perfect. It was uh, made by um, uh, Oh Koppel. That's um, Alcozo. I don't know whether the pouches are marked or not. I don't uh, see anything on them. It's probably behind the belt. Maybe. Well, we'll look into that, but uh, even if they're not, uh, this is really a nice uh, rigging here. Uh, I've had a number of uh, belts come with the bayonets still with them, but uh, I don't remember ever having an SS one. Uh, Let's see, that's, uh, yeah, that's all RCM marked on there, too. And the condition of the buckle is terrific. So, we'll have to look into that and make sure it's a good one, but I, I think it is. It's a, uh, yeah, those markings look, look very, very nice. 36-42, so 42 was probably when it was uh, when it was made. Um, I wonder if there's a year on the the bayonet at all here when that was produced. Uh, I think there is. Um, I can't see it, but uh, let me take a look with these glosses here, guys. Uh, it looks like 38 to me though, but I can't see, so that doesn't match up with the year of the buckle, but still. Does it look like 38 to you, Bob? Yeah, that's 38. Yeah, that's an early one then. It's amazing a bayonet from 38 would uh, survive in this condition through the war and all. So that's... Uh, I like that. You like that, guys? I think that's pretty interesting stuff there. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, another copy of the Beacon. We're going to have plenty of uh, reading material for the bathroom here. And there's something else here yet. Let's see what this is. Get some of this out of the way. Get some of this out of the way. Hmm. Ah, yeah, it's going to the right purpose though. And here I'm burning things again here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some pretty cool stuff in that box so far. Let's see what we got here. Dum -da -dum -dum. Oh boy, guys. Well, you you guys know what that is.
boy it sure sure has been around and uh, we'll check it out but uh, boy that really really does look like an, a good night's cross guys as it, it looks like it's marked on the back there Rob Can you see that at all <coughs> right up below the the loop See if I, if I can see any of that. Oh yeah, it's marked on the loop also, or the uh, ring, I think, on the top of the ring, I believe. Can you see that, Ob? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I think uh, the loop should be marked too. Right? I think the loop is marked. Uh, is that not markings there? Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Okay, I'll solve it there for a sec. No, hold on. Not marked or? I, it's not focusing. It's good. Is there a marking there? Yeah. Oh, great. Well, we'll uh, we'll check this out, um, but uh, just um, just on the surface, um, this thing looks uh, looks pretty good to me. I, and uh, we we'll, we shall see. But uh, can you imagine a real knight's cross in one of these unboxings? Why not? Wow. Yeah, the case looks good too. It's uh, it's got a steel button on it and the um, uh, the satin and all really looks looks right and the ribbon looks right. But wow, what a thrill that'll be if uh, if this turns out to be the gem that we hope it will be. Wow. So there you. There you go, guys. Uh, you never know what's going to come in here to, to Whitman Cellar. Um, I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite a thrill. I hope it turns out to be original. I I kind of think it is by the looks of it. Um, I'm no expert on Knight's crosses, but it just has that look though, doesn't it, Ob? But uh, yeah, it really does. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what we got done in the next box. We got one more box, guys. You still with us? I hope the wives are falling asleep by now. I'm sure, but uh, which I apologize. Uh, although some wives tell me they like these videos, so. Um, I'm thankful for that. So here's to the girls. And as I've said before too, we've got some serious female collectors these days too. Alright, one more. Let's see what we got here. box looks like it had a rough trip from uh, Texas I think it came from oh good we got some dagger bags inside mm-hmm well let's see what what these will net here well we got another sock <laughs> It's going to be a little tough to wear that one, but yeah. uh, get a lot of socks in this business, guys. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. Oh, I love this business. <laughs> it's a chain. It's a chain dagger. Wow. Yeah, it's a chain dagger, and uh, it's... Um, it's really nice too. 
Uh, it's a Type 2 chain with all the blackening in there. Really, really nice and uh, original paint. Um, it's a nickel early piece with a good nickel eagle and good runes button and see what the back of it looks like. Yeah, there's that Kulterzeichen stamping there and uh, uh, the everything looks fine on the reverse too. The grip is in very beautiful condition. Well, let's uh, let's see what the blade looks like on this baby. <laughs> oh yeah, stone mint. That's really really nice. With the motto "Mina Era Heist Troya," and uh, yep, unmarked. Yeah, lots of grain in that blade too. See that grain up? Boy, it's a that's that's a. Uh, it's a nice, nice thing with all the nickel fittings and, ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, the dagger god is good to Whitman. <laughs> is... Let me see the links again. Okay. They're really nice links with all the darkening in them. Beautiful. Nice clover leaf, uh, a nice clip. Yeah, that's a nice dagger. I mean, it, it shows a little bit of wear to the paint, but still the paint's original and it's really, really nice. And the grip is really, really good. The grip also uh, fits like a, a rubber glove. Perfect on both sides and no chips. Or... Yeah, that's... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, well, here's to that, guys. Can never have enough uh, chained SS's. That's one we'll take to the show, too. You gotta come to the show to buy that one. <laughs> oh, this is a dusty rig here. A lot of dust on that. And, oh, what do we got here? Well, it's a uh, it's an NSKK piece, uh, but what's nice about it, it has a beautiful anodized um, scabbard. Look at that scabbard; it's really really pretty. Uh, we don't see many NSKKs with anodized scabbards, but uh, it's original to the piece because the um, the fittings are the plated plated type, which you would see in this vintage of a dagger. Let's see what the, oh, it's in the, wow, I don't know what to say about this one. I was going to say, there's no eagle on the grip. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, yeah, the eagle's been taken out of mm. it. Um, it's, it's made by, um, by Carl Mice, which is not what you would consider an NPEA maker. Uh, well, where did you get an MPEA from? Uh, from the the blade has an NPEA motto on it. This is a strange animal here. This one, and uh, for some reason the um, it doesn't look like it had a regular eagle in it because the grip is not carved out for it. It just has two holes, which is a strange thing too. Well, we'll have to uh, we'll have to look into this. It might be a real gem. I don't know. Um, what's left of the hanger is just the uh, uh, the the belt loop hardware and the and the snap clip. So that's, uh, hey, it, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll take a look. I mean, that might be a, an NPEA maker that we don't know about. I don't know, we'll see. And then the last thing here. Let's see what this is. 
bag's kind of dusty too. I don't know where this guy kept his daggers, but it wasn't in his bathroom, I'll tell you that. Or if it was in his bathroom, I'd hate to go in there and take a shower or whatever. Oh, here we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it looks like we got a postal dagger here, guys. In the scabbard backwards, of course. But it's, um, the paint on it is extraordinary. And the, uh, the chain is, is correct with the, uh, the DRGM on the clip. Uh, let's see if it's got any numbers on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the DRP there and then a, a serial number like we like to see. And the, uh, the grip uh, looks, looks beautiful. No problems with it. Good, um, good insignia. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful blade. It's, got, it's covered with grease, but it's a beautiful blade in mint condition. And of course it's a uh, Paul Weyersberg, but we'll, we'll take that grease off. But I can see the blade is uh, mint underneath. So, uh, hey, who couldn't use a good postal? And this is a honey. So there we go. Wow, I'm happy to have that. Isn't that a nice dagger? Look at that, guys. That's a beautiful, beautiful dagger. The paint is just great. It, just, it shows a little age. There's some, there's some um, age crazing in the paint and a couple of little taps, but... Uh, uh, virtually that paint is still a hundred percent so uh, uh, there's a little little chip right there but it's nothing uh, but that's a that's a hell of a nice um, postal dagger and it's got the early nickel type um, uh, fittings too so it's an early piece so uh, there you go guys uh, uh, that's what I have to, to show you now and uh, I hope you enjoyed it there were some uh, some pretty interesting things there I thought there were anyhow hmm. so um, we'll be taking taking this stuff I guess to the SOS next week so I, I hope that um, a lot of you fellas are going to go to the show and girls too I like to see the girls and uh, it's going to be a, I think a great show you all know it's 2,000 tables so if you can't find something to buy there there's uh, uh, there's something wrong with you and uh, all the collectors in the world uh, are there the Germans will be there the British the Belgium the French the English We'll probably get a couple people from uh, Australia, who knows, and of course from all over uh, America. Uh, so it's not something that uh, that you want to miss. Uh, so if there's any way you can get there to Louisville, I suggest you do it. And uh, uh, and I would also like to shake a lot of hands there and uh, uh, put some faces to some of these emails and you know and. So anyhow, uh, thanks for watching my videos, and I appreciate all your your comments. I read them all, but I don't know how to reply to them yet. But one of these days, I'll figure out how to do that. But uh, thank, thanks for writing them. Uh, I appreciate it, and uh, best to you. See you guys next time.